This is a lesson on rational exponents. Again, a review topic. You would have seen this before. A very short lesson, but just to go over a few things and how we can simplify and also evaluate problems that have fractional or rational exponents in them. So to start off, if you were to consider the expression 27 to the exponent of 2 thirds, well, this doesn't really make sense. You cannot take a number like 27 and multiply it by itself two-thirds of a time. Um, in the exponent only makes sense if you have a whole number with it. But uh, it, there is meaning to this. You just have to understand what, what the fraction numerator and denominator refer to. When you're dealing with a fractional exponent such as two-thirds, the denominator, the three, always becomes the index. Technically, that's what that is referred to. That just means which root you're taking. And then the 2 becomes the, the ex actual exponent. So 27 to the 2 thirds can be tackled a number of ways, because the order doesn't matter. You can square it first and then take the cube root. But that's not as easy, because 27 squared, I don't know what that is offhand. You'd have to use a calculator. Whereas if you took the cube root of 27, um, that's equal to 3. Now I did that without a calculator. The TI-83 does have a cube root key and you can also take any root you want and I will be going through or reviewing some of those operations later. But most of them you can do right in your head. And then um, 3 squared is equal to 9. So I favor that order. Take the root first and then raise it to a specific exponent. And if you did want to use your calculator, one of the ways to do it, and this is what most people do, is they don't waste their time breaking into two steps, although there is some advantage to that. They just push it right through. And if you go 27 to the exponent, open bracket, 2 divided by 3, close bracket, you, you'll be fine. You have to make sure you put the brackets around it, otherwise your calculator will square the 27, take that answer, and divide it by 3, and that's not what you want. I would encourage you, though, mostly to get a good sort of mental sense of what these things work out to because you deal with things like numbers like 27, cube root of 27, sixth root of 64, things like that a lot. So the less often you have to go to your calculator, the easier you'll find this unit or this part of the unit. In general, what we have is b raised to the exponent of m over n is equal to the nth root of b raised to the exponent of m. And as I said before, the order doesn't matter. B cannot be equal to zero. That's for sort of um, technical reasons. And I'm not noting that this time. I did right at the very start of the unit. And as long as you remember to do this, you will be fine. So let's do a few evaluate questions just to get the hang of this. And um, some of these ones, there's only two, will be a little tricky, or as tricky as they get. So when you get 125 to the exponent of negative 2 thirds, now if you, if you put this right through your calculator, as long as you had the negative there, you'd be fine. You'd get the answer. You'd probably have to use your fraction key, which is OK. But I'm going to do this the longer traditional method. And I'm going to be consistent with what I was saying earlier, and that we should deal with that negative exponent initially. So I'm going to write this as 1 over 125 to the positive 2 thirds. You could, at this stage, push it through your calculator, but I'm also going to hold off and write this as 1 over the cube root of 125 squared. And then this, the cube root of 125, remembers what number times itself 3 times is equal to 125. The answer is 5. And then 5 squared will give you 1 over 25, and that's our answer. So I repeat, if you did use your calculator right at the get-go, you would then have to turn it into a fraction. Almost always, we want our answers in fractional form as opposed to decimals. And when we start doing exponential equations in the next lesson, you'll see why. Number two, this one is interesting because we have a negative base. and Typically, people have a hard time with negative bases with respect to radicals. And um, that isn't necessarily a problem. So when we do this one, first off, I'm going to deal with that negative exponent on the bottom. So negative 32 being raised to the 6 over 5 
multiplied by 8 to the positive 1 third. So the negative exponent brings our power to the numerator. This then becomes the fifth root of negative 32 raised to the 6 multiplied by the cube root of 8. The cube root of 8 raised to the 1 is just the cube root of 8. So that 3 is a little low down. It's not 3 times root 8. It actually is the cube root of 8. So the fifth root of negative 32, well, the fifth root of 32 is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. However, you can take odd roots of it, right? This would be negative 2 and then raised to the 6. And then this is the cube root of 8 is just 2. So be careful with that. You can take the, any odd root of a negative number. It's just you can't take square roots of a negative or any even root. Now, negative 2 to the 6, you could enter it into your calculator as it is, but you'll probably soon, if not now, have a good sense of what these things are equal to. Negative 2 times itself 6 times is equal to 64. The positive 64, because in this case, the negative would go away. And then 64 times 2 is equal to 128. So that would be our answer. And of course, you could have put it through your calculator at the beginning and as long as you're careful with it with the brackets and everything you would you'd be okay you'd still get the right answer I would say that most people do a mixture of Armstronging it like this traditional method and calculator calculators are a great way to check if nothing else so if you get good with your calculator you've always got that tool as backup now the next two questions are, are simplification ones, so I'm not actually getting a numeric answer for it. And um, this first one, base of x, and we want to express this as a single power. And the, the rule basically is that you can only do so by putting them in exponential form. So this time we're going the opposite. Instead of going from, from exponential to radical, we now have to go into exponential because that's the only way we can simplify these. So the cube root of x squared is x to the 2 over 3. And then square root of x, be careful because when it's a square root, it really is the second root. And there's no other exponent with it. So this is 1 2 like that, so it's x to the 1 half. And then all this is going to be divided by x to the 1 quarter. And here we just do what we always do. When we're multiplying powers with the same base, we add the exponent. So it's a little bit awkward because you've got fractions, but that's not the worst thing that can happen. So 2 thirds plus 1 half all over x to the 1 quarter. Get a common denominator of 6 and then 2 thirds multiplied by 2 becomes 4 over 6 plus 1 half multiplied by 3 is um, 3 and that's all over x to the 1 quarter So this becomes x to the 7 over 6 divided by x to the 1 quarter. And now we're dividing powers. And as you know, when you divide powers, you have to subtract the exponents. So 7 over 6 minus 1 over 4. And so we're in the same position we've been before. We need a common denominator. In this case, it's going to have to be 12. That would be the lowest number we could work with. So when we multiply that 7 over 6 by 2, we'll get 14. And then 1 over 4 times 3 is 3. And this finally will leave us with x to the 11 over 12. Which could be written as the 12th root of 11 raised to the exponent of 11 or excuse me, the twelfth root of x raised to the exponent of 11. But normally would be kept in this form, but both are correct. The next one is a, a variation of what we did earlier in the previous lesson, where we have x's in the exponent, 
and uh, we have to simplify it. And the only way we can simplify this expression is to get a common base. And that's critical. You cannot multiply these powers together while the bases are different. So the common base is going to be 2. All of these numbers are powers of 2. So 64, we can write as 2, and it may take a little bit of practice, and you, it's, you can only trial and error your way through it with your calculator. But 2 to the exponent of 6 is going to be 64. And then that's to the negative 1 over 3x. And 32 is 2 to the exponent of 5. Again, may take a little bit of practice, but you'll soon recognize that. And then that's being raised to the x over 5. And then this is divided by 16 is 2 to the exponent of 4. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then that's then being raised to the negative 3x over 2. Six times negative one third is going to be negative two x. So good by fraction. We didn't even have to put this in radical form. And then times two, we get another break. Five times x over five that will leave us with just x. Five x over five. And then divided by two, well we multiply this and this gives us negative six x. And now we be really careful because when we're multiplying the powers, we add the exponents. So this becomes negative 2x plus x, and then we're subtracting the one that's being divided. So that's negative 6x. I'm going to do it all in one step like that. Then we will get negative 2x plus x plus 6x. And then finally, or just a possibly final, I don't want to say for sure, negative 2x plus x is negative x plus 6x is 5x. And this is what normally considered the correct answer, but I would remind everybody that it's not impossible that this could be expressed in a different form, like 2 to the 5 raised to the x. Now this is unusual, but it is technically correct. So you could break up that 5x, that's 5 times x, and really you're just doing the inverse of the power law, and then 2 to the 5 is 32 to the exponent of x. That would also be okay. So that's it for this lesson. Thank you for your time.